Hello, welcome back. I'm Ron Mullet. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this little bookcase. It's not a hard project. It's pretty easy to do. The top, the bottom, and the middle shelf are permanent. These three shelves are adjustable. I've got a nice little detail around the front edge of the bookcase, and I'll show you what kind of router bit I use to do that. Also, I had to make some cuts with a handsaw on this project. And I'll reflect, keyword, on how you can get perfect cuts with your handsaw. So let's get started. My shop is too small to get a full sheet of plywood in, so I break it down into smaller pieces in the driveway. I put it on a sheet of three-quarter inch insulation, and then I use my Craig track saw to cut it into smaller pieces. On my table saw, I'll cut the sides and the shelves to width, but then something always goes wrong. No! I've laid out where the dados go for the top, middle, and bottom shelf. I'll push them against my adjustable stop on the end of my bench, and then I'll transfer those lines to the edge so I can cut them on the table saw. Here's a tip that I think you'll find really helpful. I put a straight edge against each side of my dado blade and then transfer those lines onto the throat plate. That way I can line the wood up without having to get it close to the blade. After I've finished the dados, I bury the blade in an auxiliary fence, and then I cut the recess for the back. Like a lot of you, I find sanding to be very boring. If I have large panels to sand, I've found that my sander moving at this speed will remove the same amount of wood as if I go back and forth and back and forth. I also save a lot of energy doing it this way. This is also a lot more relaxing. When I have my hearing protection on, I can stand here and just let my mind wander and zen out about anything I want to. Since this plywood is only a half inch thick, I'm going to add some poplar on the front to beef up the shelves and also it'll just make it look larger. This is a three quarter by one inch piece of poplar. First I'll glue it and then nail it on. Here's a little trick that will help you keep your handsaw parallel and perpendicular to the piece you're cutting. Set your saw on the line that you've made on the edge of the piece of wood. Now move the saw left and right in both axes. You'll notice how the reflection changes with each movement of the saw. If you can keep that wood lined up in a straight line, I guarantee you your cut will be straight. This camera angle isn't quite the same as my eye, so it will look a little bit different when you use it in real life. All right, let me give it a try and see how it works. Yeah, that's the kind of square cut I like. This is the router bit that I told you about in the beginning. It's a standard beading bit that is usually used to put a bead on the inside edge of a cabinet door. But I'm going to use it a little bit differently. I'm going to run it through the router like it normally would on the edge of a piece of wood, but then I'm going to flip it and run it the opposite direction so I get a complete wraparound bead on each corner. To drill the holes for the adjustable shelves, I use a piece of pegboard. I line the holes up with the line I've drawn on the side of the bookcase, and then I use a Forstner bit, which makes a flat bottom hole. 
this makes perfectly lined up holes without having to spend a lot of money on an expensive jig. Now it's time for some glue up. With nice tight fitting dados, this goes a lot easier. These squares that I'm using, I always use on any kind of plywood case work that I do. They're really easy to make from any kind of wood and I'll show you how in a later video. This is what I'm going to use for the fascia at the bottom of the bookcase. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a scrap piece of plywood that I've cut to one inch thick. I'll come in five inches at the bottom and six inches at the top line. Then I'll take a straight edge and make a mark between the two tick marks. Now I'll cut these on the bandsaw, but what I need to do is I need to cut this straight line across here. Now I could freehand that across with the bandsaw, but it's going to be waggly and I'll have to sand it. I don't want to spend a lot of time sanding. So I've got another way I'm going to try and see if that'll work. I've got to cut this straight line, put that little notch against my blade, slide the fence in until it just touches the edge of the blade, lock it down, and I'm ready to cut. Well, so like an idiot, I forgot to turn the camera on when I made this cut against, along with the fence. So this piece fell right off, so I ended up with the profile that I like, and it's much easier than try to freehand cut that. So now it's time to apply the front trim pieces. I glue and pin nail these on and then I'll sand all the edges flush after the glue dries. Having a nice fitting 45 degree miter with some really cool bead details on the edge of the trim really makes me happy. So there they are. Let me know what you think in the comments and please hit that like button. I'll see you on my next one.